After I encountered the Lord, I prayed with a number of friends in the same way I was. Most felt something of God's love, but I saw no evidence that their lives had been changed. I did not understand that the gospel is always a matter of proclamation and response. In an unbound ministry session, we may have limited time to really share the good news, but we will often have the opportunity to proclaim his saving power like a two-edged sword cutting in the, into the dark and secret places and inviting a response. Most everyone that comes from ministry has heard the good news in some way. They may have heard it by reading Unbound or coming to a conference, or they may recall one of the many seeds planted over their life. We need to know that hearing does not necessarily mean receiving. The first key is a time to make a personal, verbal, and willful response to the gospel. In Romans chapter 10, verses 8 and 9, we read, The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. The connection between the word proclaimed and the place it has found in our hearts is found in our response. We are inviting and accompanying people in the grace-filled response to Revelation. Many feel awkward leading a response. I just don't have the words. What, what do I say? Can't I just read it? It seems too much like what they do on TV. I remember feeling awkward. I was at a citywide gathering of Christians, gathering to glorify Jesus. Two young men came in drunk. An African-American pastor I was sitting with began to minister to them. After a few minutes, he turned to me and said, they're ready to surrender to Christ and receive salvation. Wow, I thought, I want to see and learn how he does this. Then he said, you lead them. This pastor led this kind of prayer most of his life. He, he probably had done it thousands of times, and, and he is asking me, a Catholic boy? I was not a boy at the time. But that's how I felt. I had seen it done at Billy Graham events. I saw it on television. I had led hundreds of Catholics to read a prayer of commitment to Christ in Life in the Spirit seminars. I knew this was not simply a Protestant thing, but a Christian thing, and I needed to grow in it. A friend in Poland told me that after communism fell, he had the opportunity to go to a Christian event in England. And when he returned, he invited everyone to come and to hear an evangelical message about making a personal decision and receiving the Savior. None of the priests or bishops invited except one, Cardinal Botia, who would become St. John Paul II. At the end of his presentation, the Cardinal got up came to the microphone and said, everything he just said is true. Much later as Pope, he would write, conversion is accepting by personal decision the saving sovereignty of Christ and becoming his disciple. I felt awkward, thinking I would not get the words right. But I knew this man of God was sitting there and he could take over. I led them to repeat after me a prayer of surrender. Not sure what I said, but I am sure I got something, something in about being a sinner and coming to Jesus who died for them. Then I looked over to the pastor to see if he, he needed to add something that I missed. He was beaming. He looked at me and said, look at them. They're completely sobered up. He was right. And he stayed with them to talk some more. So if you feel a bit awkward, 
I know how you feel. The first key is not a formula. It is a guide, a model on how to help people respond to the word that has been, been proclaimed. The word of God is alive and active. It is very near, waiting to be received. It is this foundational decision that everyone needs to make in order to say, in the name of Jesus, I renounce Satan and all of his empty promises. Thank you for tuning in to our latest ministry tip series on repentance and faith. Repentance and faith draw us closer to Jesus and the love of the Father. I hope this was your experience as you watch this ministry tip. To learn more about the first key of Unbound, Repentance and Faith, you can read Neil's books, Unbound, The Unbound Ministry Guidebook, and Abba's Heart. We also dive deeper into the five keys in both our Freedom in Christ and Basic Training Study Programs or e-courses. Don't forget to follow us on social media and sign up for our e-news to be the first to hear about upcoming events. We invite you to partner with us by making a donation on our website so that we can continue to make resources like these ministry tips available to the whole church. God bless you and we'll see you next time.